but it's a day surgery situation. So after the procedure, I would have to recover in the hospital for four to six hours before I can go home and they'll put me on hospitalization leave for two to three days. Battery is going to the orange. Yeah, I know. Uh, no, wait, let's continue. It's still recording. All right. Uh, FDR day. So the FDR, we decided to go through with it as we talked about before. A lot of anxiety. Come in at eight. The procedure would take place at nine. Um, I'd be in the procedure for about an hour, and then I'd have to rest four to six hours, depending on what happened in the procedure, how I reacted to the medication, whether I was okay to get up, etc. So we went in. They said I had to be admitted. There's a bit of confusion during the admission. Good morning. We are already at KTH and we have just taken our swap test. I feel like I, I'm not supposed to be there. I feel like I'm supposed to go in there, you know? Like our normal diagnostic phase. Mm -hmm. The system says that I'm supposed to be admitted. I mean, I know I'm supposed to be admitted, but not like admitted. admitted. I don't know. Oh, whatever. I'm hungry. But basically, I had to be admitted, but not to the hospital, admitted, but to the radiology department. Um, so we took these art tests, like the swabs up your nose, um, waited 15 minutes. Turns out we didn't need to do that. <laughs> We're waiting for the lady to come back because nobody can decide whether I'm supposed to be admitted or not. And you can decide where I'm supposed to be. So, yeah, we got handed off to another person who also was a little bit confused about the registration process took a few forms, got me to sign a few things. I didn't really sleep much on the 14th night. Just a bit anxious about having the needle back into my hand. They have to put in an IV drip, an IV thing into your hand, a catheter, whatever. And um, uh, yeah, so I, don't, I didn't like that. The last time I was in SGH and just how, what they were going to find, whether they'd be able to clear it. And then we waited for about five minutes. Then I went to get changed. They put me in a gown, you'll see here. Um, it was a white gown, then a kimono like overcoat with flowers. Um, luckily, I'm a little on the shorter side, so the kimono and the dress were, um, you know, about mid calf, but you don't really have anything else on, so it was a little bit exposed. So we finished all that, I came outside. Then Moaz could follow me up to the radiology suite, which is on the second floor. And that's where the operation would have taken place. They took me in to where the recovery room would be. The doctor spoke to me, uh, just a random doctor, spoke to me about the risks, about what, a, what the procedure was that I was doing today, whether I was aware. Moaz couldn't come in to that because COVID. And there's a lot of women in that area, so um, they would have maybe felt a little uncomfortable if he was in there. And then they put the needle in. Didn't like it. Anyway put the needle in. For those of you who've never had a IV catheter put in, they put it, it's a needle in a tube, they put the whole thing in, and then once they find your vein? vein, they pull out the needle and the tube stays inside. So the thing that you see in people's hands aren't actually the needles, it's just a tube. And then they like, so once they've done that, they secure it. They couldn't secure mine properly, like they put the tape, but the tape kept coming off, but they put the tape, like the, the butterfly tape over, and it just kept peeling off. I don't know why. And they said, oh, it's because I was really sweaty, but I was like, but I'm really cold. So the thing is they put that thing so that when they have to put your, like they put the injection or the, the medicine in, the needle doesn't move because nobody wants that in, not the needle, the catheter doesn't move because nobody wants that like moving around in the veins. By the time I got out, my tape was completely dislodged. Then they had to come over and they masking taped my hand down. <laughs> we'll put a picture here. They put masking tape to keep it down. And when they were doing that, the catheter was moving. Okay, just want to say it's not fun. Oh, I don't miss this pain from the hospital. This is a cons okay. consistent like neat, 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 neat. She's about to go in for the day surgery. How are you feeling, honey? I don't know. I'm trying not to think about it because I think it's gonna freak me out. <laughs> so I'm just not thinking about it. <laughs> it's gonna make me panic if I think about it, so I don't think I should. Okay. 
Okay, so my wife, my wife was uh, left my wife there. So she's heading, she's going in, and the procedure is about to start from the time of this recording. And I will see her in uh, hopefully within an hour. The, uh, the nurses say the procedure won't take very long, but uh, but the rest time will take quite about four hours. So. I'm waiting for the the procedure. Yep, she's gone. She was somewhere there. She was waiting there. And now she's gone. Then I said goodbye to him. They brought me in. Um, and literally when the door opened to this room, this radiology suite, when it opened, it was like, you know, in those movies where people like go to heaven. It was like white and sparkling and like, and there's literal music in the background like elevator music playing and i was just like what is this room i couldn't take any pictures we couldn't take any pictures but basically there was like a huge mri machine ct machine x-ray but it was just all white and sparkly and like clean which is good that's what you want in an operating theater but it's not like the ones that you see in like Grey's anatomy and i think the normal operating theaters <laughs> um this one was really fancy looking so i sat for a little while the nurses were super nice they were really like light-hearted um i was very nervous and they knew that um, so they kept it light and then um, had to finally take off the undies because you're getting, out, getting on the bed. So um, they, I can't remember if I still had my flower gown on, the outer gown, I can't remember. Okay, so apparently this medication that, that put you, puts you to sleep, it's supposed to put you to sleep, but it can also cause a little bit of memory loss um, of the current, the event after and also some of the events before. So I don't remember if I had both of the gowns on or one of the gowns but essentially after that they got you to lay on they got me to lay on the x-ray machine it's just like a metal bed and then they prop your bum up on a pillow like a foam pillow so your legs are kind of dangling over the edge then they lay you down on a pillow pillow you put your hands like up over your head like over here right strap a blood pressure cuff on one side then they put some saline in which is just like some like liquid like some salt liquid just to check whether your IV hurts and whether it's blocked or anything like that so they, they, they flush it then I just lay there they cover me for a while they chit chatted with me and then they put my legs up in the stirrups like you know those things that you see when people give birth stuck one leg in adjusted it because my legs are short so they had to adjust it so that I was comfortable um, then they covered me then they did the whole surgical thing so the nurse who scrubbed in she covered me with the like sheets and uh, cleaned me with the iodine solution and then uh, soon after the doctor came in uh, introduced himself so the doctor that came in to do my procedure was not the doctor who we spoke to um, this doctor was called Dr. Mohan Chandra Dr. Mohan he, he, he introduced himself as Dr. Mohan and he just said okay we're gonna get started and okay that's it there was a big TV and I was convinced that I could watch the procedure uh, but while I was lying there waiting they were playing like dolphin videos like you know wildlife videos and um, and then they started and this isn't a hallucination it was real there was like dolphins okay playing she, she told me this a few times right? yeah it's and still, he still doesn't still, believe me he thinks i was like high already it's still funny every time she says it. yeah so they were like dolphins i was like watching dolphins upside down and then um yeah and then they were like okay let's get started so the nurse said okay we're gonna give you the medication you'll feel a little bit of warmth it wasn't comfortable I don't remember much after that. Um, I remember looking up at the ceiling and watching the panels of the ceiling move upwards. And I thought to myself, that's not right. Maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe it's just this ceiling. So I looked at the other panel and that one was also moving upwards. And I was like, huh. Then I don't remember much after that. She thinks she's in the in Inception <laughs> movie, you know? I don't remember when the doctor came back in. But I do remember waking up. Because it's light sedation, I remember like 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 feeling pain and like like groaning, and then I remember the doctor saying like, "Oh, give her a little bit more," and then I completely zonked. No idea what the doctor did. No idea what happened. So much for watching this movie of my procedure. The next thing I know, they were moving me to the bed, like they were like telling me like, "Oh, hey, let's get you onto the bed to wheel you out," and I remember when I was kind of awake. I don't remember seeing anything because I think my eyes were still closed, but I remember feeling the need to vomit really badly and then i remember the pain subhanallah the pain <laughs> it felt like someone had reached inside you and twisted all your organs and then pulled their hand out so everything was swollen 
it was painful, it felt like they were still inside me, and that's all I remember. Alright, here's the update. My wife was discharged from the operating theatre uh, just, uh, just over an hour after she was brought in. I was there when she was wheeled out from the operating theatre. The nurses told the nurses said that uh, she was feeling some pain and um, and still feeling the anesthesia. She she looked quite uncomfortable uh, when I saw her being wheeled out. So I followed the nurses where they wheeled her to the observation room, where they have to monitor her for the next four hours before she can be discharged. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, the the day surgery. I went well. Yeah, they called me before she was, was, she was about to wheel out. So I was really outside waiting. When she was wheeled out, um, the, she, the nurse told me to uh, think better uh, you pass her phone to her just in case she wants to contact you. I was facing her back. So I tried to call her. So I called her, uh, hey, honey, how are you? Uh, here's your phone. Here's your phone. There was no response. So I, I just followed into the lift lobby where she was about to wheel down to the uh, first the level, room. which is on the first floor. When I, I passed her her phone, basically I just Place it on her hand. She didn't realize I uh, should place it on her hand. Oh, I'm so glad I didn't lose my phone. Uh, at that moment, we were waiting for the lift. She wanted to vomit. I said, like, "Honey, are you okay? Like, honey, are you okay?" So I want to vomit. And then, uh, oh, like, like now, yeah, I want to vomit. Then I quickly call nurse. Nurse, she wants to vomit. Uh, so the nurse went took a bag. I didn't actually vomit after that. Yeah. I remember waking up two hours later with the bag scrunched in. <laughs> so she felt like vomiting. It was bad though. Like it really felt like I needed to vomit. It just. Didn't happen. It didn't happen. But it is normal, apparently, to feel, like, nauseous after anesthesia. Like, when you're coming out of anesthesia. So I remember getting to the to the recovery room. Then I remember that I really needed to go to the toilet. <laughs> I really needed to poop. And I don't know if I needed to poop because the pain was so bad. And it was pushing on my, like, large intestine. Or I just needed to poop because I needed to poop. Because I hadn't pooped. Right? So I told the nurse, I need to go to the toilet. And she's like, oh, but we can't let you go. Because you're still, like, you know sideways and then and she's like they want to give me a metal bedpan and i was like no one to poo i can't poo in a bedpan so they're like, okay okay we'll bring you over so they like help me down off the bed and then wheel me to the toilet and they're like okay we'll come in with you i was like no i need to go to the toilet but i remember speaking really slowly and then i remember as i walked through the toilet to get to the toilet i was like kind of swaying and i was like oh, oh okay didn't think it was dangerous I, I mean i felt like i could still walk i sat on the toilet and then i could feel myself doing this and I remember reaching out to hold the bar just in case I fell into the bin. Then, yeah, but the pain was so bad the whole time. I finally finished, washed my hands, um, walked out. Then they brought me back to my bed. And I told, I remember telling them, like, can you give me pain medication? It's so painful. Um, and she's like, oh, we can't because you're still coming off the medication. And we can't, so we can't give it to you, blah, blah, blah. But it's so painful. Then I passed out. Can't remember anything after that. <laughs> Okay, I'm back in the waiting area and um, at this point, uh, four hours has almost passed. Um, she's about to come out now shortly, inshallah. Um, she should be coming around, she should be coming out from there. So um, I'll get to see her soon. Um, I've been texting her while waiting, so she's, she says she's feeling uh, some pain. Actually, she's feeling, uh, she's feeling pain in the stomach area. And she just wants to go home. I told him an hour later, like, I just want to go home now. I don't want to sit here anymore. Sat up. The nurse refused to let me go home until 2 because that was the doctor's instruction. So I just sat around and waited. I was tired of lying down. Finally, about 2.10, they, like, pulled out my IV. The doctor came down and spoke to me and said that the right, over, right fallopian tube is fine, but the left fallopian tube was the one that was blocked. But it was a minor blockage. It was just mucus. And he said it's pretty common for women to have it. It's just like how you have mucus in your throat. Um, your body just produces it to put into your fallopian tubes and stuff. He said it could it, it could have resolved on its own, but they did it for me. And um, some people come back after a year to redo it. Some people don't, depending on the body. Then I got to go home. Mm. Went home, had a fever all night, had a really bad headache. Uh, was in and out of sleep for a while. And then I spent a couple of days recovering. And that was the whole procedure. You're the ICI can find the pharmacy. You'll find the pharmacy. Huh? And wait for the doctor. And the COVID camera. The checkout is near the COVID. Can you put the sign? Okay. Bye. She's out. She's out. How are you? Okay.
Team, still keep on team. Okay, we are going home. So we're going back on the 11th of October to see our consultant to basically do final advice about where we go from here, um, whether we want to go on the assisted conception route straight away or we want to just continue trying for a little while. Um, yeah, but for now, that should be it. Shot long, no more procedures. No, more. My body's kind of done with the poking and the blood tests and the needles and the yeah my, like i i think even if he said he would want to do it i wouldn't i wouldn't do it this year i'd do it next year um yeah i'm kind of physically and mentally and emotionally like Bye. so thank you if you stay until the end thank you so much for watching basically this is just for our old memory so my nose is leaking oh okay well bye bye thank you and have a nice day it is a double update okay double <laughs> double update Quick and fast, fast and quick. So we went to the doctor on the 10th. This is after the procedure and everything, basically like a full final review before thinking about what's the next step. And he basically said, 